we're doing the thing that you want. If I go, I'm doing this, and I'm jacked, people go, well, I'll do that because he's jacked. So he must know what he's doing and all these clients get results. The whole reason we got into this, we were just showing what, well, what we did. Even watching this, this is pretty much useless. Like, and you're watching it, so. They're just showing them what they're doing and people want to have a peek behind the curtain of what that looks like. In this video, we are going to highlight the importance of sharing your journey on Instagram. Hey guys, we are Dan and Mike formerly known as Biceps and Banter, now Business and Banter. And we're here today to help you with your online fitness business in any way that we can. And today, as Mike's alluded to already, we're going to talk a little bit about sharing your personal journey and why it could be the one thing that you're not doing that could absolutely explode your business. And we're going to get into some examples as to why that's the case. Some examples of people that we followed recently and we like their stuff. Um, and just a general trend in social media over the last, say, six months. Uh, and we're going to ask you some questions along the way of, People that you follow on Instagram, why you follow them, and then hopefully get at the bottom of what you need to share more of on Instagram in order to build a more engaged audience, but also to get more clients through the door. And if you like this video at any moment in time, please do hit the like, hit the subscribe. Um, what it's there for. And, uh, uh. and if you want even more of this, um, we have our members group, which is only 99 quid, pay monthly, no contract. Uh, could be worth a shout to have a little look in there if you are serious oh. about growing your fitness business. Definitely worth a shout. No, I could. Definitely worth a shout. There you go. I'm just... More conviction, please. I'll no, just put it in their hands, you know, <laughs> if they like your it. Choice. Yeah. Your choice. Your her decision. So. Yeah, what is it? <laughs> My choice. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, yeah, it. Yeah. 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 Derek, that one. Yeah. Um, no, anyway. it's not. It's Afterlife. Afterlife, sorry, yeah. My choice. Too many things, isn't there, yeah. going on. But, um, but yeah, so this came about, uh, and we talked about this actually recently on Members Call, where we went into a lot more detail. So like Mike said, get in there. We talked a little bit about kind of social media and the problem that a lot of coaches face. And, and one of the things that we, we allude to all the time with, with coaches is that they just talk at their audience. They're just constantly like lecturing them, telling them what they're doing wrong, why they're doing it wrong. And they kind of wonder why sometimes the engagement's slightly on the lower side, where, whereas they see maybe influencers online or other people online who seem to be getting loads of engagement, loads of followers, and they're struggling to work out why, because they feel like, well, I'm providing loads of value, I'm providing loads of helpful stuff, and these influencers aren't doing anything, why are they getting loads of followers? And there's a reason for that. And the reason is usually because they are just sharing what they're doing. They're not trying to lecture people. They're not trying to tell them what they're doing wrong. They're just showing them what they're doing. And people want to have a peek behind the curtain of what that looks like. And there is massive carryover to people within fitness, certainly online coaches as well, that they need to do more of this. Um, is that people don't go on social media to be lectured to. They don't go on there just to get you going, oh, stop doing this, start doing this. You need to give them a reason. Well, why should they listen to you in the first place? Like, what are you doing? Why should we listen to you? Has this worked for you? Has this worked for anyone you work with? Um, and that's the stuff that coaches seem to um, miss out, for want of a better term. Yeah, um, in the members group, um, we, did a, we did a webinar on this. And um, I kind of asked the question to, to all the members. Um, who is it that you follow on Instagram and why? And who is it that you follow on YouTube and why? And there was a long list of people that people would follow on, on both Instagram or, or YouTube. Um, and the why is the most important. And pretty much every single one of them was the hilarious, the relatable, I like seeing what they're doing. Pretty much those three things mm -hmm. were like the, the, most common, um, the most common answer. To which I said, like... Well, if those things are what you like watching, what do you think other people also like watching? And the interesting thing that came up where if they selected somebody within fitness that, it, that, that they liked watching. So, for example, some people said Jeff Nippard or Mike Isretel or, you know, some, some other, you know, other fitness, fitness people. They made the point that it was their non-fitness content that they actually enjoyed watching, that they mm -hmm. sat through. So, so which we said, imagine if they only made fitness content, would you watch it? No. Okay. So if we all agree that even us that are in fitness probably wouldn't watch the biggest fitness influencers talk about fitness, is normal person, gen pop, plumber, teacher going to watch coach with 3,000 followers respectively talk about fitness? If even us that are interested in fitness won't watch 
say for example, Jeff Nifbard talk about fitness. We actually prefer seeing what he's eating, seeing his relationship with Stephanie, seeing, you know, that he trains, if he's on a cut or, you know, what he's doing within his life. It, it, it's those things. But yet we don't see ourselves in the same position as these kinds of creators, but we should, because it's just a, 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 um, a question of positioning. But that's the point that I want to make in terms of it's the non-fitnessy things. Even watching this, right, even watching this, this is pretty much useless. Like, and you're watching it, so what does it say about you? <laughs> but this is pretty much useless. Why is this useless? And why is this not going to get tons and tons of views? Because you're not interested in value, really. Like, because you'll watch it and you might go away, you might implement it. Hopefully you do. You will see some results. But you would be more interested seeing us on the way here, us, our training, what we, did, what we had for breakfast, the conversations that we had, well, than almost going into the back of three people on the way here. Yeah. Like, that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Our rants, our thoughts about the industry, what we're doing, the stuff that we're doing with property, the fact that, some, you know, Stripe's just changed um, some, some things on, on, on Stripe that could affect all coaches. Like, you probably get more value out of that. But we do this because it's economical. Right, but what we both said is, if we were both sat at thirty, forty clients, we would be documenting what I've just said, and you would find it more interesting. So, even this video, we can hold our hands up and go, probably not the best thing. If we want more views, if we want more people to come through the door, probably not the best thing. Yet we're doing it anyway. If that makes sense. I think there's also part of it where this fits into a broader sense of our content. Like we obviously do this because we get clips out of it for Instagram, all these other bits. And alongside that, we have other bits then on Instagram where we do that side of it is a little bit more and sharing the journey and sharing client stuff a little bit more. So this is just one small piece of the puzzle. But what a lot of coaches do is they watch this and go, oh, I quite like those two. I quite like watching their YouTube videos like this. So I'll post them without you realizing that maybe the reason you're still watching this up to this point even is because, well, you do like our Instagram, you do like our stories, you do like looking at the behind the scenes stuff that we post there. So this is just an extension of that whereby you are more bought in to listen to more of the valuable stuff or more of the stuff that is, again, talk for want of a better term, talking at you, right? We're just telling you what to do. But I would also argue that we can sit here and go, yeah, but we've done this. We are talking about this from a point of view of every, even when we do these videos, which I believe for us is the most, um, probably our, our worst style of content. Again, just, just call it what it is because it is just talking at you and giving you some information, but not really showing you the behind the scenes bits. But even within this bit, we're still talking through things that we've done, how we've done it. The fact that we did this when we did our fitness business, the whole reason we did this, uh, moved into this, this line of work was because we were working with coaches and helping them with their fat loss and their, their fitness stuff. And they were coming to us and going, oh, you know, when you built your business, did you do this? Because I've been told I've got to do this. And I never thought you did this. Or when I signed up with you, I didn't do this. And we're like, no, that's stupid. Why are you doing that? Like, because we never did it. So the whole reason we got into this was the very thing we're talking about is that we were just showing what, well, what we did and why it worked for us. And maybe you should try it. So even with us doing this, we still add some of that in. So I think that's the important thing to remember is that we still feel like this is our worst type of content. And you're hopefully still watching at this point. Like I said, it's what you're going to take from this video is then to apply the other bits that we do on Instagram and almost go over the top with it for, for yourself. Um, and the reason this came about was because we, we stumbled across um, an, econ an hard word to say, economist recently um, called Gary Stevenson, who is very, very unique and different. And the reason I think we both liked watching his stuff and almost, not say can't stop watching it, but almost feel like we want to keep watching more, is that he is not your traditional trader. Like you tra if I said to you trader, you'd think Rolex watch, suit, nice hairstyle, probably not bold. Um, right, probably like nice shoes, clean cut, clean shave and all this sort of stuff. And when you watch this guy's videos, he's like, well, I used to be a trader and I quit because I hated the way that the world was going. I wanted to, to, to I, I couldn't stay in that world. And he's dressed in like baggy hoodies, bit scruffy, like bald, like, you know, bit of stubble, that kind of stuff. Doesn't wear a nice watch, sitting there in his kitchen, PG tips bag, you know, of tea bags in the corner with like a sink with some washing done in the background. And it looks a little bit like, again, the complete opposite of what you'd expect, which is almost why it's intriguing and why you listen to him. And there's a lot that you can take from that different stance that he has on a topic that is considered normally exclusive, the elite, the higher up. And this translates into fitness because a lot of people look at fitness the same way. If you're a bit different to what normal fitness is, I believe that people will be interested in what you've got to say. And one way that you can get that across is instead of lecturing people about whether they can get 10,000 steps in a day is to go, this is how I do things differently compared to Johnny Bravo on steroids at the gym all the time. 
So that's the example that we use within the call that I think a lot of you guys could, could benefit from looking at. Yeah, I just bought a book. Um, Can't read, but he bought it. The Bible. Yeah. Nah, don't read, <laughs> don't read fiction. Um, <laughs> politics, religion. Can can't, you say Can't that? speak about it. Yeah, no, um, no, Gary Stevenson's book. Um, and it, it got me thinking about why I just bought it. Um, and it was because I liked the person. Because you could probably find hundreds of economists on, on YouTube. You've never bought an economy book, right? Probably? Never. No. Yeah. You, 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 you probably could find hundreds on, a, um, on YouTube or Instagram or whatever. But it got me thinking, why did I buy this book? Why did I purchase something from him? It's because I liked him. Because, and then why did I like him? Because he'd been honest, he'd shared his journey, and he just spoke about what he'd done. So he spoke about being from a working class family. He speaks you know, in, in kind of like regional dialects. It's Southern, you know, not Northern like me, but kind of like relatable to, you know, sort of thing. He kind of spoke about how he got into trading, how he got on at university, um, the things he did within trading. And again, it, he wasn't teaching about trading or teaching about the economy. He was mm -hmm. just talking about his journey, which creates a lot of buying because he's living proof that almost that he has the, 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 the knowledge to be able to talk on this thing, on these things. And it's similar to like coaching. Your physique, your journey, and your clients prove that you know that you're, you know, your stuff. Just the same as with Gary, the fact that he's a multimillionaire, he was um, Citibank's best trader in 2011 or whatever. That's the stuff that kind of gives us the buy-in to what he's saying is his results. Like mm. you're judging on his results. He's not sat there going, um, three tips um, to um, improve your, um, I don't know, fucking stock portfolio, mm. right? He doesn't need to educate on that. Instead, he tells his story where he's come from and backs up his, his proof and you go, okay, I'm gonna listen to this guy. And it's the same thing with coaches. It's like, you're in shape, your clients are in shape. You don't need to be given three protein tips or three things to stop doing if you want fat loss. Like you don't yeah. need to do that anymore. Instead, you should be talking about what you're doing, what your clients are doing, how you do it. And it comes across less condescending. If, um, if I'm jacked, which oh, I was going to say I used to be, nah, not really. Well, not, not really, yeah, better not than really. the average. Yeah. But let's just say I'm jacked and I go, here's how I eat, here's what I have for breakfast, uh, and mm -hmm. here's the training split I'm on. That comes across very differently to here's what you should do. Mm. Here's what you should stop doing. If I go, I'm doing this and I'm jacked, people go, well, I'll do that because he's jacked. So he must know what he's doing and all his clients get results. So you do it because there's a leading example. What coaches don't see is they're trying to educate and they're trying to put across value, but nobody's online for value. No, it's, it's, it's almost like if, if you heard the, the stuff that, that Gary Stevenson was saying by a randomer in the street with a megaphone shouting it, you wouldn't pay any attention to it. You just you'd walk on past it. And, and I might have heard the same things that he said from people before and just ignored it. It's the point that he was saying these things and then going, I know this because I used to be a trader and I saw all these things and I used to bet against this. It gives it that authority, like Mike said, it gives it that, that thing, of, okay, you've told me the story behind the fact that you were one of these people, then you quit, and now that adds weight to what you're saying. Versus if he was just stood in the street, like I said, shouting it out loud, looked like a fucking drunk just walking around, you wouldn't listen. But they're saying the same thing. So then you go, well, why am I listening to the guy? And it's like Mike said there, it's the, it's the story. And we used the example in the members group, Mike used the example of, okay, do you prefer Alex Hormozzi or Chris Williamson? Well, they both Gary say, v. they both say, uh, sorry, yeah, uh, Alex Hormozzi or, or Gary V. And it's like, they both say the same sort of things, but yet you'll have one that you prefer to listen to. We have one we prefer to listen to, you will. And then we, Chris Williamson and um, Stephen Bartlett, they were like, well, they get the same sort of guests, say the same sort of things, think about things the same sort of way. Arguably just do the same thing, but do it very differently and ask different questions. And it's like, well, you've got one of those you prefer. Um, and I think that's the thing that we're trying to get across here is that, as a fitness coach, you're just saying the same shit as every other fitness coach about fitness. But why is someone going to listen to you versus someone else? And it comes back down to your journey, your story, where you've come from, why you do it, why it means a lot to you, why you're passionate about it, where you're trying to take it, what your mission is. It comes back to all those things. So like, it comes back to, to Gary Stevenson's thing. 
Again, I keep referring to him. If you want to, after watching this, if you want to go and look at him, it's Gary Stevenson on YouTube with a V. Um, and, and you'll see what we mean by the way he comes across and the way that he is just himself. He's not trying to pretend to be something he's not. He's not sat there in a suit and he's not trying to talk all posh. He's just being himself and talking through, through his journey. And I encourage you all to do the same thing. And we talk about this from, we talk about the Jack bodybuilders and a lot of coaches sometimes feel like, oh, I just get shot down because people say, oh, yeah, but you're not jacked, you're not big, so why should we listen to you? And it is kind of that. It's kind of like, well, show them what you're doing to get bigger. Show them your progress. Show them that you were a skinny kid and that you're now, uh, you've got a bit more muscle. You might gain 10 kilos of muscle. That's pretty impressive if you were skinny. If you were, if you were definitely someone that found it hard to gain muscle. Talk about that. Talk about that journey. Rather than just trying to compete with people on that top end and being like, oh, no one's going to listen because I'm not big. Take people through that journey from when you were really, really small. Again, taking them through that journey and showing them why it was harder for you, why it's more difficult, why it's not as easy as other people say it is. Whatever. There's so many ways you can put your own spin on this and that is your unique ability. That's your unique superpower when it comes to content creation and being online versus trying to go, oh, I've talked about fat loss, I've talked about 10,000 steps, I've talked about drinking water, I've talked about getting enough sleep. Show me you're doing it. Yeah. That's literally what my client Ollie's just done. So Ollie has just grown by, as it stands today, 126,000 followers um, in the last five or six weeks just talking about his journey from being skinny to being jacked. So that's all he does. That's all he talks about, you know, how I get my calories in, what to do if I'm not hungry, mm -hmm. um, what, you know, how I felt when I built no muscle for the first three years of training. Mm -hmm. Like, he just talks skinny jack, skinny jack, skinny Stakes jack, skinny jack, all that yeah, all skinny jack. Yeah. And then when you show that you've done that and you've lived that, people go, oh, how did you do that? Can you help me? Mm -hmm. And that's it. Again, you want to do something that somebody else has done. So with us, right? You either watch us, work with us, whatever, because on some level, you probably want to build your business in a similar way to us, mm -hmm. right? So you're wanting to walk through somebody else's shoes. So it makes sense that the person showing you what they're doing is, is actually doing that. So like we work with a, a property investment mentor, and again, why? Because we've seen what he's done with his own property business. He hasn't sat on Instagram and given us three tips to invest in your first property. He, do, he doesn't do that. Instead, he talks about his deals, where he's come from, the fact that he spent 18 months delivering Chinese takeaway to, to build up to where he's at, the fact that he started from nothing, he's from a working class family, the fact that he's now got X amount of million property portfolio, the fact that he's just developed four, two million plus houses. Like, it's because he's shown that. You kind of go, okay, I want to learn how to do that. So who am I going to learn from? Somebody who's actually fucking done it. Mm -hmm. So a lot of you coaches here will be thinking about what content to make. Realize that you are the content, or you should be. And if you kind of go, oh, I haven't really done anything. I'm not particularly doing anything. You need to change it. Because why would somebody sign up with you if you're okay staying stagnant, you're not particularly in great shape, you're not particularly doing anything of any kind of impressive, um, you know, sporting fitness type thing, and you're, you know, you're not really moving anywhere, and you're not really showing it. Why would anybody, what reason mm -hmm. would they have to listen to you when they can go and listen to somebody else that's, that is doing those things, that is pushing themselves, that is, you know, walking from, you know, walking the walk or whatever, leading from the front, whatever you want to call it. And it makes your content so much easier because, because it's, you're just documenting what you're doing. One of the members yesterday as well, she, she said, oh, um, oh I've, I've just finished you know, um, training for a marathon. I've just finished it. And like, I've got, not really got anything to talk about in terms of my journey. And I said to her, I said, like, you're telling me that no one's ever finished a marathon and felt lost with what they're doing. They felt like they're gaining weight, that they can't do the level of training they were doing before, lost their motivation to do that, don't know where to turn next, don't know how to train because they don't know when their next race is going to be. Talk about that. Like people always think that it has to be built into something amazing. It can just be what you're thinking and feeling on a daily basis. And we talked about this before we started filming this. We should probably share more of what we're doing, <laughs> undoubtedly. Because I think people might look at us and go, oh, they never doubt what they're doing. Or they never think, oh, like, what if, what if? It's like, no, regularly we, we think about that sort of stuff. Regularly we think about the future and planning and what we need to change and whether we can do it or not. And maybe we need to share more of that stuff uh, uh, as well. But I counter that and say we're also sat here with a waiting list that's three months long and, you know, it, what we're doing seems to be working quite well and we're probably doing bits of that without realising it anyway in, in some of the stuff that, that we do. And like Mike said there is that, you know, we, we ultimately have built this up over time and I regularly get people on calls, on, on consultation calls with me and they're going, um, and I, I always ask, ask the question, why are we here? Like, what, what's the big thing? And they sort of say, well, you've never cold DM'd me. You've never reached out to me. Um, I watch your content and yet I wanted to book a call in with you to find out how to work with you. I want the same thing for my business. 
I'm like, exactly. So we're doing the thing that you want versus like, I always say to people, like if you had someone in your DMs all the time, messaging you, harassing you all the time, trying to get on calls, what do you think they're going to tell you to do with your business? And, and when I say that to them, they sit there and go, oh yeah, actually, I'm not, I'm not actually sharing enough of what I'm doing and how things work and all this sort of stuff. Because all we talk about all the time is the fact we don't do cold DMs. The fact we don't do that sort of stuff. We don't charge up front. So you know coming in what it's going to be like. Do you do the same thing? No, you don't. You just say, here's three ways to get protein in. Okay. People know that chicken's got you know, more protein in. They know they're not getting enough sleep. They know they're not drinking enough water. They know they're drinking too much coffee. They know, they know that. You've got to explain to them how you do it and how you get around that what your sleep hygiene is like. Because again, people talk about, oh yeah, get 10 hours sleep. Do you? No. Right, and if you do, like show me how you do it. And again, it's that whole thing of show me, don't tell me. Instagram is a place where people click the follow button. Think about that word, follow. They're following what you're doing. They want to see what you're doing. If someone was to follow you around all day, what would they see? Post that. You'd be amazed at how much better your engagement will be on Instagram, but also in the longer term, how many more people will want to work with you? Start on your stories. Um, post it like a daily vlog. Like, don't come back and go, I do nothing all day. Okay, well, show that you do nothing all day then. Yeah, fine. If you are at your desk working, show that. Like, what do you think you should show? Show what you're eating. Show how you're training. Like, show that you're going out for a walk. Right? Show that. Talk about it. Same thing every day. Like, okay, cool. If it, you're going to you, ask your clients to do the same thing every day right, as yeah. well. If, if it is, it is. But start with stories and then probably migrate onto, onto your feed and start to make content about what you're doing, about your journey, about where you're at. And that doesn't need to be, like Dan said, it doesn't mean, need the, mean that you need to start a marathon or you need to start a prep. Your journey is your life because you, you should be moving towards something. Like if we... I, I used some examples yesterday. I was like, if we said, over the next four weeks, we're going to take you through the recruitment process of us bringing on a new coach into our brand. So we're going to show you all the applicants. We'll show you how we're going to um, interview them. And we're going to show you the selection, pro selection process and how we would onboard a, a coach. You'd probably be quite invested to see what kind of coach came through, especially if, you, if we introduce you to the 10 applicants. Mm -hmm. You'd probably be interested to see which one got it. We could also do um, documenting our first year going into property. And you'd probably watch it and see if we, you know, what type of property we're going for, why we're going for it, the, the issues that we're having. We'd probably be moaning about how slow professional services are. <laughs> like, and you'd probably be quite interested to see what actually happened and why we're doing it. If we said we're going to try to double our revenue in, in the next year and it's, that, that's the aim and we documented doing it and showed, right, here's what we're going to do with the members group, here's what we're going to be doing with that business, you would probably follow it. So say it's the same thing. Like it's, you would probably follow those journeys and it would be better than watching this, right? Um, so take from that and use that. So migrate then onto your feed and talk about whatever journey it is that you're on. And then the best, the gold standard would be to do both of those plus YouTube every week. Oh, I don't know what to post. I don't know what to make a video about. Anything. Literally anything. Just told you. <laughs> Just told that. you. Yeah. Show what you're doing because people will be interested. So this week, yeah, I'm working on a new lead magnet. Um, kind of putting it together at the moment. And um, it's going to be four weeks free coaching. So make sure you keep your eyes peeled for that. Um, and then, yeah, I, I'm off for a haircut, right? Haircut, look at it. I'm looking pretty good. Um, better than Dan. Um, Dan wishes he had hair to cut. Next lunch. Um, loving this at the moment. It tastes banging. Like... Even just stuff like that, which mm -hmm. is nothing, that's nothing content. People will watch it. Like people will yeah. watch it and it will give them a deeper understanding of who, who you are, why you do what you do, what you're working on, the behind the scenes of your coaching. You can show everything in that and people will watch it. So if we did do that then, mate, we'd probably get copied. So, uh, uh, they, do you know what I mean? Everybody copies us. Ah, it's always the way, isn't it? Unfortunately, the others are dickheads. So, <sighs> you know, they probably shouldn't show more of it. <laughs> Because nobody will like them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, hope you enjoyed that, guys. That's, um, that's, that, that's that video. Like, again, I come back to this and I sit here and go, there will be a very, very small subsection of people that will apply this. Most people will ignore it. We've already had one guy in a members group who actually is doing really, really well since January. I think he's gone from 1,000 to about 8,000 a month recurring, which is absolutely obscene. He literally texted me after watching that video yesterday and he's posted his first day one journey video. Uh, four weeks to uh, a tournament coming up with rugby. Day one. Did it straight away. And, and there's a reason that those that implement this stuff straight away will get the results quicker. Don't sit on this. You can do this content. This is easy content to come up with. You're doing it on a daily basis. You've just got to film yourself doing it. Um, hypocrite warning. 
Yeah. Um, just do it. If you've got 30 clients, you need more clients. If you've got 10 clients, you want more clients, this is going to be the thing you need to do. Super simple. So yeah, like the video, subscribe, do all that shit and share it with someone. See ya. See you in a bit.